Well, hey, everybody. My name is Nicholas. I'm an artist in northern Minnesota. And painting with solvents and toxins, it's not good for your health. Uh, it's certainly not great if you have pets or kids in your house as well. And so today we're going to talk about how you can oil paint toxin-free. So one of the biggest misconceptions that, that is kind of around oil painting is that oil painting is toxic, that there's no way around it. Now that's simply not true. The pigments that are in oil paint are the same pigments in acrylic, except what they're suspended in. So now with oil painting, you have it's suspended in oil, typically like a linseed oil, and that's the vehicle for the pigment to move. And an acrylic painting is an acrylic polymer, but those pigments are the same thing. It's typically what artists do and add to their oil paints in thinners and solvents for both painting and for cleaning their brushes, which is why we consider collectively oil painting to be toxic, but it is not toxic by itself. So today we're gonna to talk about how to not add those solvents and how to kind of get around it. And we're gonna talk about the process that you can make your studio safe. By deciding not to use these solvents in my oil painting process, there was a couple hurdles I needed to overcome. First of all, how am I gonna thin my paints? How am I gonna get a different flow than what's coming straight out of the tube. Secondly, how am I gonna clean my paint brushes? Alrighty, let's take a look at some of the materials I use for painting. Uh, the first up is this walnut oil, and this is the medium that I use to thin my paints. M. Graham makes a great walnut oil that flows really well with the oil paints. Uh, it doesn't yellow over time, um, and it's just overall a really great product. So I keep uh, the oil in this little dropper, and this allows me to just add a little bit of oil without spilling it all over the place. I'm a notorious overuser of my mediums and oils, and so I have to have a dropper to help me. In my other dropper, I have the a walnut alkyd medium, which is has a fast drying um, component that makes uh, the medium really, really nice to use. It has the same flow as the regular walnut oil, uh, but it has a little bit of a, a drying agent in it. That's non-toxic, uh, but it's not gonna dry as fast as a cobalt dryer, uh, but it will um, be dry in the next couple days and I can paint another layer over that. If I was to use just a regular walnut oil, uh, we're, we're talking like a week on drying. <laughs> uh, it does get a little gunky at the bottom. Uh, it's still fine. Uh, don't worry about it. Uh, but this medium has been a lifesaver for me because I wanted to be able to have something that dries quicker. And if you paint really thinly, it'll, it can dry overnight and you can paint the next day. So when I'm painting, I'm not using turpentine or mineral spirits at all. So one of the most crucial elements of getting around using mineral spirits to clean your brushes is brush dip. Brush dip is a combination of walnut oil or poppy seed oil and a little bit of clove oil. And that clove oil helps your brushes not to dry um, in between sessions. I can actually go for days with my brushes cleaned out a little bit on a rag and then dipped in this brush dip and placed on the holder there to my right and my brushes are fine. I don't have to clean them after every use which is a huge component and why we use turpentines and mineral spirits in our painting process. I have a whole video about this brush holder and brush dip that kind of goes through it in a little more detail. I'll have that on the screen and in the description if you'd like to check that out. As you can see, this very much looks homemade. I mean, I made it myself. I'm awful at working with wood, uh, but it's really an easy make and it's pretty much an essential part of my kit when oil painting. So I don't typically clean my brushes and I leave them on my holder, but when I do clean them, I use this Masters Brush Cleaner. It is fantastic. It's just a specialized uh, tube of soap. When I'm finally ready to actually clean my brushes, I just go over to the sink. Uh, I grab the, uh, a glove. Uh, this is just a regular uh, kitchen glove. Uh, this is just to kind of protect your hands while you're scrubbing uh, the paint. Hello out of the brushes. And I'm just gonna grab a little bit of the soap and take a little bit of water and then I just kind of work it into the glove. And this helps get uh, the paint out of the brush. Now remember I did 
have oil in this before, I'll usually take it and clean it out on a rag with a little bit of uh, walnut oil before I do this process. So go ahead and make sure to pick up uh, some of this cleaner. This brush cleaner is fantastic. You can get it in smaller tubes. You don't have to get this ginormous tube of soap. This next product is a pink soap uh, by Mona Lisa. Um, I don't know why it's pink. It's a little scary. Um, I don't really know exactly what it reminds me of. But it does the same thing as the Masters, um, is that it just cleans the oil out of your brush and also does have, has a little conditioner. And so that's really helpful. I sometimes kind of combine the two soaps. Now as a last resort, if I can't get the oil out using the other cleaners, I will use this Chelsea's Classical Studios brush cleaner. It's non-carcinogenic. Uh, there's no turpentine, there's no petroleum in it. Uh, it's basically kind of a, a lavender spike oil, they call it. And this works really, really great. So why should you not paint with solvents? Well, first of all, let's talk about your health, okay? So there's a lot of health risks that um, come about from using solvents when you paint. Um, they're just, they're overall just really toxic. And um, there can be short-term effects like um, you can get a headache, um, you can almost feel drunk. Um, there's, but there's long-term effects that I mean, it can affect your brain. There's brain damage. Uh, there's there's links to cancer. So as solvents um, dry and evaporate, they release toxins into the air. So solvents and paint thinners are used to thin down your paint and also to clean your paint brushes at the end of the day. There's a lot of mediums that contain solvents. Uh, typically when you have a medium, it's gonna contain a little bit of turpentine or a mineral spirit uh, combined with an oil. And this allows you to get uh, the type of flow of paint that you're looking for. And so you can choose from so many different kinds of mediums that will give you the type of flow that you want. So the more solvents that you add uh, to your oil paint, uh, the more of a flow and thinner that it will get. Now a thin paint is used historically at the beginning of a painting because you want to observe the, the fat over lean rule. And so you're gonna add more thinner to your paint at the beginning. So when I was using solvents, I um, would typically feel like I'd get a headache when I'd be painting. Um, even if I had good ventilation, I mean, I was at, I was at a place that had great ventilation, I would still still feel like a, a little bit of a headache after I'd paint. When I picked up oil painting again, I also had uh, a small child. <laughs> my, baby, my baby girl was in the house and I just didn't want her to somehow get into that or to come in my studio and, and have these toxins in the air. But I set out on a quest to kind of find a toxin-free uh, solution to oil painting. So the first place I went to was uh, Muddy Colors. Uh, it's a great blog filled with uh, the masters in, in illustration. And um, the guy that I've been following for years, uh, Justin Gerard, had, was kind of documenting his journey of kind of trying to go solvent free for, for a lot of the same reasons. And uh, I'll link those in the, I'll link those articles in the description here because they're really, really helpful. And he talks about some of the products uh, that he has used. His wife, Annie Steak uh, Gerard, also uh, is toxin free. I mean, they live together and so they decided this as a, as a couple. And so she's been also very helpful. So one of the things that I kind of hear conflicting information about is the cadmiums. So like cadmium red or the uh, lead white. I know that there are some artists who just, just find out alternatives to those colors. And some of the research that I've done, it appears that the cadmiums are not the same as they used to be. They're not gonna be as toxic. Um, so if you're not eating them, you're gonna be okay. It's not like, you know, like a paint thinner uh, that is evaporating into the air. So don't eat your paints. So painting without toxins in your studio is not only possible, it's actually pretty easy. So I have a whole video that I did about why you shouldn't be cleaning your paintbrushes. And this whole non-toxic thing is a part of why I made that video. And actually not cleaning your brushes actually sped up my whole process of oil painting. So I'll just link in the description, a link to that video. One of the nice things about painting without toxins in your studio is that you don't have to mess around with the ventilation. Ventilation can get uh, loud, it can get expensive, and to not even have to deal with ventilation, um, all I have to worry about is not eating my paints. So fortunately, I, was, I mean, I was pleasantly surprised that having a toxin-free 
a studio is actually pretty easy. It's not something that's really difficult and that requires a lot of, of changes. I mean, really, it just takes a few minor changes in materials to make this all possible. And I'm gonna go ahead and link the materials in the description of this video so that you can just go ahead and find what you need. So I hope today this little video will help make your studio a safer place. Uh, you don't have to be afraid of oil painting. You do not have to paint with toxins in your studio to enjoy oil painting. So remember that you are valuable and that you are loved and that you absolutely matter. We'll see you next time. Thank you so much for joining me.